I got a lot of comments in response to my last video about instability on the EcoFlow when it's overloaded with a circular saw. So I thought I'd do a follow up, investigate some more. I've got the yellow trace on the scope measuring voltage and I've got a plug and a socket connected and the length of wire that has 100 milliohms as a shunt resistor which I'm also measuring with the scope. If I turn on this heater, the blue line represents the current which is nicely in phase with the yellow because it's a resistive heater. Let's put the scope in roll mode and run the circular saw. And the current went way off scale, so I need to scale that back a bit. And that's still off scale, so scale back some more. So that blue trace peaks out at two divisions, top and bottom. And that is 5 volts per division, so 10 volts with a 0.1 ohm resistor means we were peaking at 100 amperes. So no surprise the inverter on the EcoFlow box went a bit funny because it's not rated for that kind of current. But just after 260 hertz cycles we can already see that drop off significantly and zooming out more, within half a second that starts to get pretty reasonable. You'll also notice that the line voltage coming in, that's the yellow trace, drops quite a bit when the saw starts because that circuit is way overloaded. But uh, breakers will pop over 100 amperes or at their rated current if it's on for several minutes. So this was not enough to pop the breaker. Let's hook that up to the EcoFlow power station and see how that one does. The white cord is for probing the voltage and I'm not connecting that to the neutral part because I'm already getting neutral out of this thing here where I'm probing the shunt resistor. So this is the very first cycle where the saw turns on and we see some voltage instability and the current rises up, this goes to 5 volts. So that means 50 amperes and then the overcurrent protection on here kicks in and we see the current is held relatively steady but the voltage goes crazy because it's an inductive load and turning the voltage on and off doesn't switch the current that quickly. And zooming out, this goes on for quite a few cycles. In fact, it gets even worse. Um, we also see the voltage exceeding what it should go just with all this instability. Until finally we get back to something that's relatively normal because the current is now much less. Although that's still one division, so that current is still peaking out at 50 amperes. And at 100 milliseconds per division, the duration of all this instability is... 1, 2, 3 and a half, so 350 milliseconds. And a few days after my previous video, I got an email from EcoFlow and I was like, uh-oh. But actually the email was quite nice and they explained about this overcurrent protection circuit. It's there to protect the transistors so they don't blow up. And looking at the waveforms, it's pretty clear it kicks in right about here because it just cuts the voltage right off. After the current drops a bit, it comes back in, on, off, on, off, on, off, and that leads to the oscillations. This being a hardware uh, protection circuit, it's somewhat less graceful than the control algorithm for the inverter that normally runs things. And they also wrote an article that I put on medium.com explaining this whole thing in more detail. Really, it's amazing that this thing is able to put out that much current at all. And if there wasn't for the risk of blowing a transistor, there's also a 100 amp fuse on the 54 volt battery pack. So if they kept going at that, even if the transistors didn't blow, Possibly the fuse to the battery pack would blow because it's so overloading everything. And so while these high frequency oscillations can cause damage to things like a kilowatt meter, it's uh, nice at least that it protects itself because blowing the EcoFlow would be a heck of a lot more expensive. Let's try it with a collection of space heaters plugged in all at once. So that took about 450 milliseconds before the EcoFlow decided it was too much. But looking at the current waveforms, well, we do have some high frequency oscillation on there, but it's overall pretty nice and sinusoidal. And if we zoom in on that a bit, and looking at one cycle of that, that says it's about 30 kilohertz. And that, no doubt, is the switching frequency of the inverter inside of this. Uh, this is actually the inverter board from one of these. It's like a computer power supply, switching at high frequencies. And these things always run well above audible frequencies because the transformers on these things do emit a little bit of sound, but if it's high enough frequency, nobody can hear it.
So when it's way overloaded, I guess some of that does come through. It doesn't get filtered out. But if you look at the current waveform here, that centers around the top here, around 5 volts. So it was putting out nearly 50 amperes. So let's say that peaked at about 48 amperes. That works out to about 33 amps RMS times 120 volts is 4,000 watts, which is way overloading it. But uh, even if the transistors wouldn't overheat from that eventually, I think the internal battery fuse might blow, so it's no wonder that it called it quits within half a second, because it's way overloaded. Let's try it with my big homemade bandsaw. So we see the uh, cycling with the overcurrent protection as before with the circular saw. And the current is quite high even here, but uh, the whole thing doesn't last long enough, so within half a second the current has dropped already quite a lot and so the EcoFlow doesn't give up before the current gets to a reasonable level. And now with my smaller 16 inch bandsaw. So the starting current on that one unfortunately doesn't drop quick enough and so we're still oscillating by the time the EcoFlow decides it's too much and cuts out. Now the rated current for this motor is 7.8 amperes and I think once it gets up to speed that would be fine but it just takes too long at too high a current for the EcoFlow and it just cuts out power. By pre-spinning it like that, uh, it gets to a reasonable level within about a quarter second, so the EcoFlow doesn't cut out. We get the usual oscillations and very high current, but after that, you can see the current actually drops to a very reasonable level. And starting induction motors is generally a big problem for these battery boxes because they have such high starting currents that uh, quite often the battery box cuts out before the motor actually gets up to speed. Now if the tool has a soft start, that can help this high inrush current. This is a 10 amp router without a soft start. So we have the usual overloading and oscillations with this one. So this other router, even though it's an 11 amp router, with its soft starting circuit, never has this extreme inrush of current, and we never really encounter major instabilities. Okay, some oscillation, but the overcurrent circuit doesn't kick in. Now the question is, can we filter out some of these oscillations? So I'll connect this 25 microfarad motor condenser in parallel. And that makes the voltage swings not oscillate nearly as much, although we're actually seeing quite a bit of oscillation on the current. Not surprising because the current is going in out of the capacitor. Let's switch that cap to be plugged directly into the EcoFlow so we're not measuring its current. So this actually doesn't look nearly as bad as what we had before, but this is not a great solution because according to my kilowatt, the current to this capacitor, this thing here, is 1.4 amperes because it has to keep charging and discharging as the voltage change. The power, it says here, is 0 watts and a power factor of 0. So even though this capacitor isn't using up any net power, it is causing current to flow and that means the inverter has to do more work and because things aren't 100% efficient we're losing power that way. So with this thing idling no load hooked up at 58% charge we have 56 hours remaining for this thing to just use up power idling. Now if I plug in that capacitor it anticipates running out of power after 39 hours. Based on a 2 kilowatt hour battery capacity, we're using 20 watts just sitting there, but 30 watts with a capacitor plugged in, so the inverter is using 10 watts just to move current in and out of the capacitor. And I just noticed the display says it's outputting 90 watts, but that's clearly not true, so it's not taking power factor into account with the display. So aside from space and cost, there is good reason not to put a capacitor like that on the output filter. In fact, the output filter capacitors on the EcoFlow box are just two and a half microfarads, so about one tenth the size of that. So I suggested to EcoFlow to just make the main control algorithm reduce the voltage so we never hit those crazy current spikes, but they said they couldn't because it needs to happen fast enough so you don't blow the transistors. And that hardware overcurrent protection circuit is really fast, fast enough for a dead short. So we have a lot of current coming out, uh, no voltage because it's shorted. And we can see that current uh, cycling on and off because we have a dead short on the output. And then after just three cycles, it decides to uh, stop doing it.
but it still works. And plugging in my many heaters, you can see the yellow voltage waveforms takes a few cycles to stabilize, and that's probably too slow, so they need that much faster harbor protection to protect against extreme overcurrents. Now those high frequency oscillations can damage some devices, like my kilowatt meter, but I think most things like cell phone chargers are okay, so I got a bunch of them plugged in, and let's run that circular saw a few times. And the iPad says it's charging with this charger, so that's still good. Try the iPad's own charger, charging, this one, charging, this really cheap one from the dollar store, charging, and the smart plug still works too. But I won't test it with this power metering gadget because this uses a power supply design very similar to what's in the kilowatt, so just like the kilowatt, this one might get damaged from those oscillations. But even though the EcoFlow is quite good at not blowing up from overcurrent, I did blow the inverter on it by accidentally connecting neutral to ground, which is why I have this uh, spare inverter board that's busted. And another YouTuber who left a rather unfriendly comment, uh, I looked at his channel and he had also mentioned that he'd blown the inverter on one of these Delta Pros, also by connecting neutral to ground. So yeah, the EcoFlow is pretty good about not blowing themselves up, unless you connect neutral to ground, so... Don't do that. And based on the comments on my previous video, this sort of inverter instability when way overloaded is quite normal, unfortunately. I think it should be possible to design an inverter that reduces the voltage smoothly when overloaded, but I think you'd have to set up to do that to begin with. As for the other battery box company that approached me, that company was Blue Eddy, and after my previous video, they didn't get back to me. What a surprise.